Westall is a 33-year-old mum of two from rural Cumbria. Two years ago, she decided to become a primary teacher, so has been on a flexible part-time teacher training course since 2005. Being a mum, she's already familiar with primary education and contact with children. However, Christabel also works as a non-teaching classroom assistant at Casterton Primary School. Both of you have got outstanding work. At the moment, Christabel is on a work placement at Beetham School and is being mentored by Jude Harkness. Jude is 23 and has been a part-time Key Stage 2 teacher here for a year. Christabel is only her second student and they've been working together now for eight weeks. Christabel is about to teach a numeracy lesson to Key Stage 2 pupils in the school, which has a role of only 39 pupils. For me, one of the most important things about having a mentor, and certainly a mentor like Jude, um, has been just the support that she's given me and the encouragement. Um, and always knowing that I get honest feedback from her. Um, when it's come to the planning, which I think when you come straight to placement, it's very difficult at first. She was very careful not to give me too much, but not to give me too little um, to, to put into the lesson. And uh, it just seemed to gel because I've only been out of college myself for three years. I think things were fresh in my mind as well. Um, and I can remember the things I wanted as a student. So it gave me some ideas of, of what I was coming into. Talk me through this morning then, Christabel. Right, for our maths lesson this morning, we're doing today's lesson's the coordinates lesson. Um, I've got my plan here. And the introduction to the lesson, mental oral starter, I'm going to ask the children to recall what they can remember about coordinates. Okay. And then I thought I'd go to the National Numeracy Strategy ITP grid. I've got my steps to success to put on the board Brilliant. for starting at the origin, then going horizontally, vertically, and, yet, and how we write them. Some of those words. Uh, that's all right. <laughs> and then the task, individual tasks, I've differentiated for the year threes and the year fours. And then for the plenary, I thought for five minutes I'll give them an empty grid to draw their own shape on, and then uh, somebody can read out their coordinates, and whilst another child plots it again on the ITP grid. Wonderful. So that's uh, that's my lesson. Okay, we'll go to the classroom and start. Okay. <laughs> Today we are going to be remembering how to plot, how to read and how to write our coordinates. I want you to turn to the person sitting next to you and on these whiteboards I want you to write down everything and anything that you can remember about coordinates. I tend to make notes throughout an observation and then I will talk to the student after the lesson or at the end of the day um, and get a general feel for it, asking them how they thought the lesson went first before giving my own opinion. I'd give my, um, my positive advice first and then feed in things I thought that they needed to, to work on maybe and target for next time. Well, that's actually a nice way of receiving feedback because it, you, know, you put them down as any negative goes down as a target. Um, and uh, we decide on those together. Yeah. So uh, I mean, I've, there's never been an occasion when Jude said, well, I thought this didn't go very well, and I've said, well, I thought it went really well. <laughs> so we usually agree, don't we, on what, because um, I can feel how it's, uh, you know, if things are going wrong. Jude and Christabel are going to watch video footage of the lesson so Jude can feed back thoroughly and they can set their targets. Today, we are going to be remembering how to plot how to read and how to write our coordinates. Can anybody remember Miss Hartness's rhyme for remembering which line is horizontal, which line is vertical? Bradley, go on, what is it? Horizontal M stands on the head. Horizontal carry lies on his head. He does, yes, but you've said it back to front. We say it, we talk about horizontal Harry first, don't we? Okay, so we say horizontal Harry lies in his bed. Vertical Veronica stands on her head. Not only does it tell us that horizontal Harry lies flat like that, but also that when we plot coordinates, we plot the horizontal number first and then the vertical, okay? It was good there, repeating the words horizontally, vertically, so it's getting clear in the children's yeah. head when they come to do it themselves. 
I think that's partly nerves, my repetition as well. <laughs> Make sure I've said it. <laughs> right, the coordinate for that. And then you go start to go around the shape. Right, that one, that one, and that one. Right, someone in year three to hand out the year three for me. And Natasha, can you hand those out for me? And year fours. Don't forget to write your name and the date at the top of your sheet. So it was really good, you've got two differentiated tasks there. It may have been nice if the sheets were out on the desk, so when you were telling the children that there was a dot, they could see uh, the, it more so they could see it more clearly in front of them. I think a lot of them picked up what mm. you were meaning, mm. um, but there's the odd few in the group that you know yeah. might need that extra support to have it in front of them first, then when you say, is it clear, hopefully yeah, they then respond and let you know, honestly. <laughs> We can remember the name we give to lines that are going in that direction. Go on, Laura, what is it? Horizontal, it is. It's a horizontal line. Throughout the lesson, when you're doing mm. your shared part, as well as hands up and looking for children with hands up, maybe direct some questions at individuals. Mm -hmm. So those that don't answer as often, or maybe just aren't as confident putting their hand up, you could think of a a differentiated question that you know they're capable of answering yes, yeah. and then targeting to them and saying Ryan can you mm -hmm. answer this, Darren can you answer mm -hmm. and feeding them a question mm -hmm. um, and they are quite used to that mm -hmm. rather than it always being the same myself. people. Yeah. It is something that I do want to include in my lesson, um, but sometimes there's that much to think about. I forget to remember who I've actually asked. I can always say I know that Jeannie is oh, hands always up, um, and and so yeah, it's something that I think for now, it was certainly that lesson. There was that much else for me to think yeah. about that I just can't keep track of it yet. Now then, what do we put around our coordinate? Your coordinate for that point is three six. Well done. And what do we put between the two numbers? Fantastic. What number is it on this side for this dot? Which direction are you going in? Which direction are you? Which spot are you doing? This one. Six. It's six. That was really good work one to one. There was lots of prompts and questioning in the right direction, but you didn't feed her the answers. Mm. You waited for her to give the direction and the wording. Was good. It was quite tricky and I was quite shocked at just how lost she was starting off on that task. Yeah. I think what was different as well was on the sheet there was five shapes mm -hmm. on the one grid yeah. whereas on the board when you modelled there was only the one shape. Yeah. So I think that might have threw too much information. Yeah. <laughs> threw, yeah. threw them off. Mm. One one that's right. One five. So this one here yeah. is okay. Which number are you going to read from the vertical? It is. Lovely brackets and a lovely comma. Well done. Get, call me again if you need some more help, all right? Your praise is consistent throughout the, the whole of the independent work and the shared part. And it's nice the children know to put their hand up or just turn and face you. Mm -hmm. And you work your way around the classroom, giving them all support. Mm -hmm. It was a bit difficult by this stage and I was aware that I had Laura over that side and Ryan over that side of the room who I knew I needed to keep an eye yeah. on and make sure they understood and I couldn't actually get to them. You could always <clears throat> move them around um, and sit those children that you feel want the support together mm -hmm. um, yeah. in a different lesson. I might do that next time yeah. actually and I can keep them together. I would like you to draw a shape on this grid you must only use straight lines, okay? And then when you've drawn your shape and you're happy with it, I want you to write the coordinates for each corner of the shape. Okay, there's lines at the bottom for you to write those coordinates on. And then at the end of the lesson, I'm going to ask some of you to read out the coordinates for another person to plot on my blue graph. I thought the timing was really good with your shared work and how long that you, um, you spent talking and modelling and then letting them interact. Mm. Well, I'd, uh, I made uh, an effort with, uh, with this lesson. I think one of my last targets was to get the timing right. 
Um, so I had rehearsed this lesson a few times at home in front of the mirror to just get that timing right because I'd set them two tasks and I wanted to make sure that that wasn't too much and that it could fit into the lesson. Yesterday afterwards when I reflected on it at home it didn't feel that it had gone as well as it actually looks like it did go and I'm watching it back now um, because at the beginning when I'd asked them to remember as much as they could about coordinates they didn't put down as much as I thought they would and the exact thing things that I thought they'd put down um, and certainly at the start of the lesson, the first 10 minutes, I felt like I was really ad-libbing a lot and I felt that it was very disjointed and I hadn't gone in the order that I'd wanted to go in. But watching it back, I'm really pleased to have seen it because it was better. I, yesterday I thought it was an okay lesson, but I thought looking back today, it was good. Okay, so after reflecting on the lesson to set a target, um, what about to differentiate my questioning to include all the children? Okay. Or would, would that be too, too demanding of me? Yeah. Mm. Another one, to differentiate key questions to individual pupils. Mm. Yeah, I think to try and make sure that, um, that I do include uh, all the children when yeah. I'm questioning throughout the lesson so they've all had a turn. Yeah. I think that will give you as well any idea. If it wasn't in your plan to work with a certain group of children mm. and you saw from your questioning mm. that there was a certain individuals, you could then even change things and adapt it and take them yes. into a group yeah. and continue with your yeah. lesson. Excellent. I think when a student comes, depending on their experience, they'll all have different needs. Um, Christabel, with her having children, and having previous experience in school elsewhere, I think Christabel's needs weren't as um, extreme as what another student may be. Um, she knows the life and the routine of a school. She knows some curriculum knowledge already. Um, so you, you weren't as needy as no. others may be. Another overwhelming thing as a student is when you actually look at something like the National Numeracy Strategy, all the jargon that's in it. That for me has been my yeah. biggest challenge. I can't imagine combining that yeah. with trying to get to know what a child is um, mm -hmm. and, and having absolutely no prior knowledge yeah. of the And work. just the basics like bell goes at nine o'clock, where the where, what lesson structures are and when mm. play times and things are. Mm. Um, students that haven't got that experience mm. are coming in really with a, a blank canvas that you've got to help them build. I think the student mentoring experience has been really good. Um, not only for myself and Christabel, but for the children in the class as well. Um, on a personal level, when I'm watching Christabel or even having Christabel observe me, um, you're always reflecting on the things that you're doing as things are mm. happening. I think for the children it's really nice to have another adult in for them to work with and get to know and respect. From my point of view, from a mentor, I would uh, I certainly appreciate having someone who is uh, open and, uh, and again just wants to pass on their love of teaching to me and uh, who wants to actually, who wants their student to be as good as they are. And also, you know, don't get an email from your student on a Saturday night and think, flipping it, our student's emailing me again. You know, think, great, my student, you know, wants to get it right an email back, you know, with any, with any query. I certainly would consider being a mentor when I, if I ever qualify, when I qualify, um, I would certainly want to gain a couple of years experience and then I would definitely um, want to be a mentor and pass on, you know, my good experience to somebody else, um, most definitely.